What's up, everyone? Justin here, back with another new countdown show on this uh, Sunday night. Hope you had a great weekend. So, uh, tomorrow's Monday Night Raw, and I'm excited to tweet it. I will be on Twitter, as I always am, at WWE NXT Guy. This uh, new countdown is, is my top 10. Top 10 best heel turns in wrestling. Top 10 best heel turns in wrestling. I did shoot this show on my phone, and I fucking it fucked up. I couldn't upload it. I don't know what's going on with my phone, but it's not letting me upload videos. So I'm doing this video. If you think uh, the quality is shit, well, I don't care what you think because it's my channel. I'm shooting uh, this show and probably shows in the future for good until I, I don't know. I don't know how the fuck I'm going to fix my phone problem, but whatever. It's not important. From now on, I'll be shooting my shows on uh, my tablet or my webcam. My reactions will always uh, be on my webcam or tablet. Don't like the quality, I don't care. What's uh, most important, you can fucking hear me. So that's all I really care about. On the videos I record on my phone, it used to work sound, audio, and uh, you could see me, and now it won't. Ha it doesn't have sound or video when I upload it on the phone. I don't know what the fuck's wrong. But again, it's not important. Top 10 best heel turns in wrestling. Number 10, WWE 2008. Chris Jericho. I don't know if he's a face before this. But uh, Chris Jer Jericho turning on HBK on the highlight reel. Slammed HBK's face into the screen. The Jeratron, uh, whatever the hell it's called, 5,000, excuse me. So Jericho's turn was so fucking good, I thought, in 2008 on HBK. He might already been a heel, but he heel turned on Jericho, basically. That's what I'm sticking with and trying to say. I thought it was a heel turn. And damn, it's good. Shawn Michaels and didn't want to fight Jericho, did not want to fight him. I believe they did uh, wrestle at the Bash 2008, I think, and Shawn bled a lot, I believe. Got busted open really bad. And then Jericho at SummerSlam was going to apologize, I think, for what he did to Shawn by slamming his head into the TV, flat screen. And Sean's wife came out, and then Jericho punched his wife in the mouth. She got fat lip. And that just pissed off Sean more. And then they had a feud at Unforgiven. They had a good, uh, like, unsanctioned matchup. Really good. And they had a ladder match at No Mercy. That was really good shit. 2008 Jericho HBK's feud was fucking awesome. Number nine, heel turn. Kevin Owens on Chris Jericho in 2018 on Monday Night Raw. The festival of friendship was so fucking good. It was so awesome how it was done. So well done. So well put together. Thank God Jimmy Jacobs was like a backstage producer. I think he put a lot of that together with uh, Jericho. Or a lot. I think the list was uh, Jimmy Jacobs' idea, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. But uh, Jericho, that, god damn, Jericho can get anything over. He got a list over. He wanted to get the word it over or something, and he did. Even uh, Jericho getting Orange Cassidy, even Jericho is so good, Jericho's getting over Orange Cassidy. It's working. It is. He's helping Orange, Orange Cassidy get more over. 
by being in a program with him. So Kevin Owens gives Jericho a gift. I believe it's a new list. The bottom, the camera was showing it. It said the list, I think, of KO. And Jericho's like, why is my name the only name on the list? And then Kevin Owens just beat the fuck out of him. It was so good. I gotta watch that back on the network. It was so good. Festival of Friendship. I'll never forget that heel turn by Kevin Owens on Jericho. It was so good. They should have main evented WrestleMania for the Universal title, but no. Stupid Vince had to put the Universal title on Goldberg when he defeated Kevin Owens. I believe that was in my hometown also, where Goldberg defeated Owens really quick. I think it was fast lane. But uh, back to top 10 heel turns. Again, number 9, Kevin Owens on Chris Jericho. It was so goddamn good. Number 8, MJF. This Eddie picture keeps crumbling. Got to rest in peace, Eddie. Got to represent. The guy was one of the best of all time. Not one of my favorites of all time, but one of the best. I loved Eddie. Number eight. Top ten best heel turns. Number eight. AEW. And AEW hasn't been around that long. Only over a year. A year and a couple months. So uh, they haven't had too many great heel turns, but this was one of them. And I kind of saw it coming. But uh, it was still great. I didn't really know if he was going to do it, but he did it. Number eight, MJF. Heel turn. Turns on Cody at full gear. After he lost to Jericho, Cody was helped up by MJF. I think MJF first uh, threw the towel in because Cody would not submit. I think he threw the towel in. And that was bullshit because you screwed over Cody, your best friend, and Cody can no longer get world title shots. I wonder why Cody, I wonder why he's given the TNT championship. Because he can't become the world champion. That's probably why. They, that's why they created the damn TNT championship. Probably so Cody could have a title. And that's not a knock at Cody. It's not. I like the guy. So, uh, I, uh, what I don't like about AEW, I think they got too many damn cooks in the kitchen. You can't have the Young Bucks and Cody and Kenny and Jericho all fucking trying to run the company with their own ideas. You gotta have one guy in fucking charge. And I hope that's true. I hope Tony Khan, I hope he has a final decision on all their ideas. I know they're vice presidents, but Tony Khan writes the damn checks. I hope uh, Tony Khan doesn't get manipulated by them in the future and played by them, because he probably could. Because he's not a wrestler, and those guys are very good politicians in backstage politics. So, uh, I, everything AEW does does not work. The Dark Order is shit. I don't know who the fuck came up with that. If it was Cody or the Bucks or Kenny or Tony Khan, but that's an awful idea. The Exalted one was a stupid idea, too. Should have just brought in Brody Lee by himself. There's been also other stupid ideas they've done, but enough about AEW. I'm not here to bash them. I watch them every Wednesday, so I support them. And I want them to succeed because competition for wrestling is great. Number eight, MJF turns on Cody. Cody puts his uh, hands on MJF's shoulders. MJF has started crying. I think he's on his knees, and Cody helped him up. He's crying because he screwed up so bad, but no. Then he kicks Cody right in the fucking balls, and that was awesome. 
crowd was pretty shocked and pissed and upset. And MJF is such a fucking good heel. I don't know what they're doing with MJF. I think they're trying to turn on Babyface, it seems like, with his uh, MJF 2020 stuff. The guy's not really acting like a the great heel he could be. Number seven. Back to WWF. W, no, it was WWF at the time. Back to 1991. And by the way, MJF's uh, turn on Cody was in 2019. At full gear. 1991 is number seven. Shawn Michaels. The Rockers. Shawn Michaels turns on Marty Jannetty. What the fuck, Marty Jannetty? What the fuck are you smoking? Because you are fucking, you act nuts. You act insane on social media. I don't know what the fuck Marty Jannetty's on, but that is a weird, weird guy. He's uh, pretty fucking nuts. So number seven, Shawn Michaels turns on Marty Jannetty in the barber shop. I believe on Wrestling Challenge. Gorilla Monsoon, Bobby Heenan were on commentary. It was so fucking good. The gorilla, I believe, was outraged. Bobby Heenan loved it. He started making jokes. It was so goddamn good. I'm going to play you the audio. Why the fuck won't it take my password, this phone? Really? Come on now. So, while I wait, if the phone says the password's wrong, it is not, I'll be back in a second. All right, I'm back, and I fixed my uh, phone problem. Here's the audio of Shawn Michaels turning on Marty. It was so good. Turn my back to you right now. This is Marty talking. When I turn around, we're going to shake hands, and we're going to go on a rock and roll like the rockers can do. Hopefully you can hear us. We need each other. You it's, know that. Listen to Bobby Heenan. God, is great. He's not going to walk away. They need each other. Such a good heel turn. Could have been my number one. It was so good. Sean puts his hand out. Listen to Bobby Heenan. Super kick through the barbershop window. Bobby Heenan said Janetti. Bobby Heenan says Janetti tried to dive through the window to get away. That was fucking hilarious. Listen. Right through the glass window of the barber shop. Bobby Heenan. Marty busted open. That was shocking for the time in 91 because nobody barely was allowed to bleed in WWF. I mean, Hogan bled, but he was Hogan. So Marty bled, and that was on an episode of, I believe, Wrestling Challenge. They did that, where Sean turned on Marty. It was so goddamn good. Hopefully you enjoyed that, hearing the audio. I haven't watched it in like a year or two. It, it was so good, man. That Sean turn on Marty. One of the best of all time. 
it could have been number one, best heel turn. Number six, WCW heel turn. 1995, Halloween Havoc. Ric Flair was a babyface. Fall Brawl, he took on Arn Anderson. Halloween Havoc, he was going to team with Sting. I believe he didn't show up for the match until like the end. Sting was in the ring. Flair, Sting tags Flair. He gets a huge pop against Arn Anderson, Brian Pillman, I believe. Flair struts, struts, and goes over to Sting, punches him, starts stomping, beating the crap out of Sting. Flair, Anderson, Pillman beating the hell out of Sting. Great fucking heel turn at Halloween Havoc in 95, and that was a highlight of Halloween Havoc 95 because that was not a very good pay-per-view. But I love the Flair heel turn on Sting. At Halloween Havoc, 95. The crowd loved it, too. They fucking marked out and popped. I don't know why the crowd was so excited about uh, Sting getting double-crossed and just turned on. I think it was in Detroit, so that crowd was probably more a fan of heels, I guess. And they loved our flair. Number five, Bailey. Monday Night Raw, 2010, not 10, 2019, Monday Night Raw, I think it was, I don't know what month it was, I think it was last summer, Bailey kind of did a heel turn on Becky, Sasha, I believe was beating Becky with a chair, probably was right before the Hell in a Cell match, maybe, with uh, Sasha Becky, that was really fucking good. That was good shit. Anyways, Bailey grabs a chair from Sasha, then stares at Becky, laid out, picks a chair up, starts beating Becky, cracking Becky with the chair. That was awesome. It was kind of a heel turn, I guess. I think it was, but they never really did anything with it because they didn't put... Bailey in a program with Becky after that, I don't think. I don't know if after she did that, did she win Money in the Bank? I don't remember. Because when she won Money in the Bank in the title, I think the same night she got a baby face, big reaction. But I thought it was a heel turn. Bailey taking the chair from Sasha, and this is before she cut her hair off and cut the ponytail. Just beat Becky with the chair. That was great. That's number five. Bailey turning on Becky with a chair. 2019 Monday Night Raw. Number four. Bailey again. I thought it was a great heel turn. The first uh, debut episode of SmackDown on Fox. Bailey turns on the two men. Bailey does a heel turn on the two men. And all of her uh, kid fans. No more hugger. No more hugger. This is a role model. This is Bailey's era. And during this uh, pandemic era in the WWE and wrestling, fucking Bailey has hit it out of the park. In my opinion, Bailey has done some of the best fucking work of her career. She has been fucking great in 2020, in my opinion. Bailey has killed it. She has done awesome with uh, no fans around. I mean, she's damn good at promo. She's damn good heel. I love Bailey, and I will always uh, support her. So, number four, Bailey turning on the tube men, cutting them up to pieces. Took her hood down, had a short haircut. I like her short hair. I think she should keep it for good. I think she's a lot more, just looks better. And is somehow, Bailey's got more attractive to me. Maybe it's because I love her as a heel and what she's doing, but fucking Bailey as a heel turns me on. So, uh, number four, Bailey turning on the two men. And then the same night, she won the SmackDown Women's title. 
300 day title reign. It's uh, over 300, 302 days right now. She uh, defeated Charlotte, I believe, on the first SmackDown on Fox. And Bailey gets on the mic, tells the fans off, says, screw you bitches. That was great. So she did turn on the tube men and the fans. So number uh, four, Bailey turning on the two men. Number three, Paul Bearer turning on the Undertaker. This was really shocking, unexpected. At SummerSlam 96, he was really damn good. Number two, Kurt, not Kurt Angle, uh, Andre the Giant. Number two, Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant. Turning on Hulk Hogan in 1987, Andre the Giant was fucking loved as a baby face, I would say, from 84 to 87 until he got together with uh, Bobby the Brain Heenan. And then Andre went to the dark side, joined the Heenan family. What I'm going to try to find a play for you is Andre turning on Hogan on uh, Piper's Pit. Um, I know it's on YouTube. It's got to be. So I was going into the biggest WWE show of the 80s for sure of the decade. The biggest show of the entire fucking decade in my opinion was WrestleMania 3. It was bigger than Starcade to me. It was bigger than anything NWA did in the 80s. Uh, War Games is pretty fucking great, but WrestleMania 3, to me, surpasses it, what NWA did. So here it is. It's, uh, so there's uh, two clips here. I'll just go with the clip or the video that shows Bobby Heenan by the side of Andre. It's four minutes. I don't know, I'm not going to play the whole thing. This is like, they're showing like a recap of Piper and Jesse Ventura. Why did Jesse Ventura, I don't get why he's involved. And bringing a guest to Piper's Pit to challenge Hogan. That's kind of weird. Why didn't Bobby Heenan say that part instead of Jesse Ventura? Nothing against uh, Jesse. The guy was a fucking awesome commentator in the 80s. The guy's pretty damn funny. So I guess Piper's man, I guess, was Hogan. Huge pop for Hogan. Tire fucking sold out arena on their feet. For Hogan just standing there. So the backstory, Andre they claim was undefeated for fifteen years. I'm pretty sure on uh House shows, live events, other territories, other promotions. I believe he did lose and get counted out or DQ'd. He was not undefeated. I really doubt that. But whatever. WWF wanted to make up their own rules like they do a lot. So they claim Andre's undefeated 15 years and Hogan would never give him a title shot. Or... That's what Bobby Heenan said, and Hogan says, I would have gave you a damn title shot. You never asked. Stuff like that. And Hogan was champion for three years, three straight years already. He was champ. So just what what a fucking build-up to WrestleMania 3 in the main event. It was so fucking good. The build-up was one of the best, best feuds, best build-ups, backstories of all time. In the WWE's history. Four, 
Andre comes out with Bobby Heenan. That was shocking. Hogan's pissed. What are you doing with Heenan? Andre just staring a hole in the Hogan. Bobby Heenan gets in Andre's ear, got in his ear, or paid him off to join the Heenan family. And last week on Piper's Pit, before this, uh, they gave Andre a smaller trophy for being undefeated. And Hogan got a big-ass trophy for being champion for three years. So Bobby Heenan making a lot of good points for Andre. So you never gave him a title shot. He used them. Going back. Let me stop this for a minute. Going back to 84 January when Hogan won the world title from the Iron Sheik at MSG. Andre was backstage. Congratulated Hogan. Poured champagne on his head. So this was three years in the making. This match. The build up. The backstory. Fucking perfect. How it was done. Could have Andre sadly had broken English. The guy was not American, but uh, it was kind of hard to understand him sometimes. But god damn it. Anyways, uh, I was trying to set the phone up and fell. I could barely understand Andre right there, but I did hear him say, "Get your hands off my shoulders," to Hogan, and then he. Lifts his chin up, I believe, and says, You look at me when I'm talking to you. So, uh, let me go forward a bit. Hogan is shocked, upset, heartbroken. <laughs> so good. Andre challenges Hogan. Hogan, Hogan can't believe it. Rips a shirt and cross, throws it on the ground. Walks out with Bobby Heenan. Legendary. What are you doing, Andre? You can't buy cross the shirt. What's wrong with him, man? You can't leave like this. You're bleeding. It's not how Andre come back, man. You don't have to leave like this. Piper was fucking great in his role, saying, Hogan, you're bleeding. Because the cross cut Hogan. And Andre ripped it. That's my number two heel turn of all time in wrestling. Andre the Giant turns heel on Hogan in 87 before WrestleMania 3, before the biggest pay-per-view in the company's history. One of the greatest 
storylines, uh, feuds of all time. Hogan Andre was fucking must watch. If you were a fan of wrestling in the 80s, you fucking had to see it. Sadly, I did not see it live. I was only three years old. But I did see it later. Probably when I was like four. On video when I rented it. I didn't rent it, but I had a family member rented for me. Because as a kid, I was obsessed with uh, going to the video store, Blockbuster, or video stores, and looking for wrestling videos to rent that I did not see. And back in the 80s, 90s, the video stores near my house had a lot of wrestling videos, old pay-per-views, that I, or new pay-per-views that I didn't see on pay-per-view that I'd rent only costed one dollar to rent a wrestling video or pay-per-view. One buck. I miss those days of going into video stores and looking for what wrestling videos they had available. That, uh, there was a different time, a different era way before the network, before Netflix, before streaming services, it was really good, really fun to go in a video store and look for wrestling videos or movies to rent. Anyways, but it is better now. Technology, streaming services, it's a lot better now because you can stay home and see any damn video movie you want to see. Or any old pay-per-view you want to see. You can watch it from your damn bedroom. Or anywhere you want in your house. You can watch it on your phone, tablet, TV, PS4, Xbox. Awesome. Apple TV, whatever the hell you have. You can watch any streaming service or the WWE Network from your home. It's great. So, uh, number one. Number two was Andre turning on Hogan to go into WrestleMania 3. Number one, greatest heel turn in wrestling, Hawk Hogan joining Hall and Nash. The Outsiders becoming the third man in becoming Hollywood. Hawk Hogan getting rid of the red and yellow, growing a black or dyeing his beard black with his uh, blonde mustache. That, Pretty damn funny look. And it fit him as a heel. Becoming Hollywood Hawk Hogan, getting rid of the red and yellow, telling the kids to screw, just screw off and go to hell. It was so damn good. Listen to the promo Hogan cut at Bash at the Beach 96. It was so fucking great. And I'm pretty damn sure it was not scripted. It was off of Hogan, top of his head. Because the guy is a pro and one of the best of all time. And I loved Hogan promos before he was a heel. I thought he had good promos. Because he was so fucking hyped and pretty excited. But uh, anyways, number one greatest heel turn, best heel turn in wrestling. Number one, Hawk Hogan. Joining the NWO, becoming the third man. It was so great. So great. It was so goddamn good. And I've heard rumors of fans throwing trash in cans and bottles might have been plants in the crowd. I don't want to believe that, so I won't. I think they're real pissed off fans. And who cares if they were fucking plants? It doesn't matter to me. It worked. It fucking worked. Because all the fans watching on pay-per-view or in the arena thought, holy shit, the NWO and Hogan is fucking so goddamn hated. And it was such a great heel turn. Number one best heel turn, Hawk Hogan going heel at Bash at the Beach, 96 Hope you enjoyed this new countdown, my top 10 best heel turns. Bye for now.